Welcome to Online Talks with DigiPen Singapore. I'm Shantina Ravindran and I'm Dying. Today we're going to talk about games and how they are an effective medium for expressing different cultural values. In 2010, a video game titled Call of Duty Black Ops achieved superstar status when it became a blockbuster that simply eclipsed and then obliterated the opening day profits of every film, book, or music album ever produced. The ability of a video game to do so underscored at that time the sheer power, popularity, and allure that the medium of video games encompass. It was this allure and power of video games that led many such as Newsu to predict that by 2020, the number of video game players would rise to 2 billion and to even 2.75 billion by 2023. And needless to say, as far as 2021 is concerned, this prophecy, with me, with we may call it so, has come to pass because video games, which are such a phenomenally popular pastime of today, boasts 2.2 billion players already. This simply means that it is not wrong to state that somewhere out there in the world today, and of course, probably right now as we speak, someone is playing a video game. And owing to this widespread and ever-growing popularity, video games have come to be regarded as a vital part of the mass media, a common method of storytelling and representation, as well as shapers and reflectors of the cultural values and norms of our society. And before we delve any deeper to examine how video games help to shape the cultural landscape of any given society, it is pertinent first and foremost to establish a crucial point now itself, which is, even though we know that there are various controversies surrounding video games, but as far as this discussion is concerned, we would like to focus on the potential of video games as a powerful medium to positively shape the cultural values of any given society as much as they themselves are shaped by these values. With that said, let's look at what video games are. Games designer and academician Gonzalo Frasca, who focuses on the study and research of series, and political video games states that unlike traditional media, video games are not just based on representation, but on an alternative semiotical structure known as simulation. Now, I will pass the time to Jaying, who will talk a bit more about what video games are before telling us why they are important. Indeed, the simulative power of video games ensures that video games are not just modes of entertainment or leisure activity. So what's so important and useful about video games? Why should we talk or even play them? Undoubtedly, video games are a contemporary reality. As a relatively young medium, video games became socially popular from the 1980s and have grown over the past decades because it is now easier than ever to play video games. Platforms for video games have expanded from arcade to TV consoles, PC gaming, and now we can even play games on the go, on our mobile devices, and even on social media websites. Video games are more accessible than ever. Secondly, video games embody some of the most important aspects of our society today. Video games are emblematic of digital and technological culture that defines quite a huge part of our current social landscape. They represent the emergence of participatory, collaborative, and interactive culture, and demonstrate new modes of meaning making through gameplay. Third, video games appear as one of the most relevant cultural products and objects of our time. The video game industry is a thriving cultural industry, and this can be seen in the increased revenue in video game companies and growing number of video gamers in the world. Game exhibitions, museums, and events over the years have solidified video games' cultural importance. Finally, there is a growing and consolidating video game culture because of the institutionalization of video game practices, experiences, and meanings in society today. In Singapore, this is seen through the setting up of Singapore Game Association and other organizations, as well as universities that specialize in game design and development, DigiPen included. 
Game design is incorporated in many other industries as well, including banking, urban planning, and education. In this way, video games are effective mediums to express cultural values. As Gary Crawford and Daniel Muro write in Video Games as Culture, video games are therefore understood as an expression of life and culture in late modernity. We can also think about video games as experience, culture, and social technological assemblages, where video games are expressive of life and culture in our society, which is why there are so many discussions about the positive and negative impacts of video games today. Video games embody complex interactions between people and technology, and it is important that we consider how video games and their culture can help us to understand aspects of social life, such as work, education, culture, agency, power, experience, empathy, and identity in today's world. Not only do video games reflect society, they also shape the way we think about cultural and social issues. Video games can influence positive social transformation and affect cultural changes, as well as teach us valuable lessons and skills. So how do video games express and produce important social cultural issues and values? Video games like films adopt audiovisual styles in their modes of storytelling. When we analyze film and literature, we attend to the text symbols, metaphors, literary and filmic techniques. These elements reveal the symbiotic relationship between literary and filmic modes of storytelling. Through their unique forms, they express and produce of cultural values. Like literary and filmic texts, the medium of video games is also effective in expressing cultural attitudes, trends, and events. With narrative adventure games and video novels gaining popularity, literary modes of storytelling are increasingly incorporated into video games today. These different types of games have strong stories that help to evoke certain insights through our interactivity with the game. However, as compared to film and literature, we will see today that video games and their modes of interactivity engage their audience in very different ways. For one, the audience can become active players in the narrative, and we can even have a direct impact on how the story unfolds. Shantina will now tell us a little bit more about how games express social and cultural issues. Just as our giant point to tell that video games are based on interactions, we have to look at what these interactions primarily are. The games are based on the interactions between the player and the various aspects of the game itself that produce an experiential simulation of the cultures and settings they portray. This is exactly what that makes their messages more visibly impactful than other mediums for their audience. Apart from being visibly impactful, video games offer flow as well. Flow is referred to as the intensity of engagement. This in intensity comes about because the games offer the player who is engaged in the game, not just the pleasure of the moment, but also the comforting thought that this pleasurable moment might go on indefinitely. This creates an immersion and an involvement in the game and its content unlike other mediums. Furthermore, this visceral impact and flow bring about an intense concentration in the player who is trying to tackle the challenges or problems that the game deals him or her. With this intensive concentration comes deep thinking, of course. If you want to talk of deep thinking, maybe you just want to think of chess. And this point will make a lot of sense because as many of us know, chess is a quintessential problem solving exercise for artificial intelligence programmers. And we know that a game of chess calls for intensive concentration and deep thinking to make the right moves. It is exactly for this reason that video games bring on intensive concentration and deep thinking. And that is also the reason why Jane McGonigal, a game designer and evangelist, stated that perhaps to effectively manage global social and political issues, we should all be playing more video games. Then perhaps we would concentrate on these issues better, think more deeply about them, and therefore perhaps solve them better. In fact, when she delivered her talk title, Gaming Can Make a Better World on TED Talks, she referred to as evidence an image of a gamer who prior to achieving the so-called epic win, displayed the 
classic game emotion, which was a combination of a sense of urgency, some fear, but intense concentration and deep, deep focus on tackling a really difficult problem. She claims that this intense concentration in a game can be harnessed for social change by turning real world problems into collective online games where everyone plays with deep concentration and thinking and probably come out with effective solutions to these problems. Whether we agree with her that making video games out of world issues and making us play them can change the world or not, McGonagall, as well as many other writers on games, are clearly right about the popularity, flow, intensity of engagement, concentration, and deep thinking that video games can generate among dedicated players. And of course, they also write about the potential of video games to help change our cultural perspectives and notions about several issues at hand. Not only that, other game designers have gone on to highlight several other key features of video games which serve as a clear revelation of the huge potential video games harbour and the advantages we can actually reap if we were to harness them accurately. Some of the advantages of video games, Jiaying, as you already know, are several, but then it would be worthwhile to just look at them a little bit quickly right now. First and foremost, it allows for real-time 3D rendering. It simulates physics and other physical processes in real time. Instantaneous text, audio and even video communication is made possible because of video games. And video games support both user creation with digital tools and it also enables the near instantaneous sharing of data. This list of features and characteristics, as we all know it, are not final, of course. It keeps growing and the good part about it is that it's going to keep growing. It is these characteristics and features of video games and their potential for future growth that make them such a wonderful medium that many of us have come to recognize as more than a tool of entertainment. That means video games are not just for entertainment alone. In fact, to many game designers and game researchers and players, games are no child's play. You know it, Jai, you play them, right? But serious business because they often, more often than not, I have to say, tend to be complex, meaningfully crafted and contain skills that sometimes require their players over 10, 20 and beat it, even 200 hours of learning time. Can you imagine 200 hours of learning time? These game designers and academicians and researchers of games also recognize that video games command high levels of thinking as well. And at the same time, call for the understanding of complex systems. They also enable creative expression with digital tools and the formation and manipulation of social networks. The benefits are all not purely cerebral or skill-based, of course. Games have also become excellent medium for the impartation of cultural values. Isn't that wonderful? This is because game design is meaningfully and purposefully draw from a rich field of cultural topoi and representations that is well established. At the same time, they take the trouble to incorporate all these familiar motifs from popular literature, art, cinema, or even political discourse into their games to engender conversations and encourage understanding of a wide range of issues at hand. In other words, the patterns, emblems, and thought processes that are available in the existing cultural and social landscape of a society are frequently absorbed into the realm of game design thus creating a complex cultural matter science, which in turn facilitate the discussion of several cultural values, such as respect for solitude and quiet, and embracing its importance, as well as learning to care, learning to give, and learning to help without being impulsive and intrusive. This, needless to say, enriches the player's cultural and social grooming and development. Some of the games that do that so well are games like Gris. That's a lovely game and you must play Jai. Mm. Before we elaborate on Gris, Jai will give us a snapshot of many of these games we would like to talk about today. Jai, over to you.
Today, Shantina and I will be demonstrating just how games teach us important social cultural values through three very unique game examples. Shantina will first talk about Gris, a sensitive game about the journey of healing, before I address Mutazione, a game that teaches us how to care. Before I end our talk with a playthrough and commentary of Rhyme, a game that explores the five stages of grief. I will now hand my time over to Shantina, who will tell us a little bit more about Gris and its beautiful message. Shantina, please. Gris is a platform adventure game by Spanish developer Nomada Studio and published by Devolver Digital. Gris is often described as a game that deals with loss and the devastating effects of this loss. It, however, does not dwell on the loss. Instead, its central message is the overcoming of this loss by traversing each and every stage of the loss and the grief that comes with it. Each of these stages is represented by a different color. At one's own pace, the player has to traverse this stage and focus on what one truly is so as to draw strength and energy from within first and foremost, than from without. By doing so, the game celebrates the culture of patience and allowing one the time to heal at his or her own pace. This game is so beautiful because it reminds us to shun the culture of hurrying through everything, particularly healing. And healing cannot be hurried. And to explicate this, Gris can be more often than not described as a game which unfolds beautifully like a gentle flowing watercolour painting. Its very gentle unfolding and very soothing music itself is a testament to the truth that coping and dealing with losses is a process that cannot be hurried. And I want to say that again, healing cannot be hurried. We must respect that even though we live in a very fast-paced world where we expect things to happen at the snap of our fingers, we must look at this attitude and remove it from our lives or else we might not grow and live a fulfilling life. To iterate this truth, the player is ushered into each stage and allowed to experience each stage at his or her own pace so that he or she can overcome that stage at his or her own time in order to attain the desired growth earmarked for that stage. At the same time, just as how it celebrates the culture of patience, this gentle flowing watercolour painting of a game celebrates the empowerment of the self by paying homage to the culture of respecting solitude and the concept of me time. In this light, I believe that the game then can also be referred to as a guide, a very, very gentle guide that leads you in a non-invasive way to slowly and surely understand the meaning of loss and the impacts of it on a person's life. It is also a game that I feel is telling us in a very subtle and gentle manner to retreat from today's culture of forever seeking connection via the numerous social media platforms to achieve healing or empowerment when facing a loss. In today's world, where we are constantly bombarded by the need to be connected, or perhaps wired to some device, either because we are afraid to face our innermost fears or because we have not recognized the power of solitude and we mistake connectivity as empowerment, Gris is a beautiful, gentle reminder that we need to retreat into the space where we are able to look at our inner self and rediscover what we are capable of. Amazing, isn't it? Beautiful. The present culture of some of us to seek affirmation from these forms of social media or from our peers, known and unknown, is a trend that is perhaps not wrong. I'm not going to say that it is wrong, but sometimes we forget that we are our greatest helpers. That's why Greece, in my opinion, is a game that by situating a solitary player provides a metaphorical illusion to the importance of embracing the culture of retreating to a quiet place that facilitates us to look deep within ourselves so that we can rediscover our strength, redevelop our talents and become better than who we were prior to whatever loss we suffered.
In this sense, I think, and this is again completely my point of view, that grace is constantly and consistently a reminder for us to forego the desire to be tied to the noisy environment and welcoming the culture of enjoying solitude as this brings on self-reflection and with it the attendant benefits of self-discovery and self-improvement. The very fact that Gris, the girl of this game giant, is all alone in this almost ruinous landscape, which just transforms into something more beautiful later on, is by itself emblematic of the truth that the process of self-discovery has to be at times a solitary process. Thus, we need to invest in the culture of divesting ourselves from the present day distractions and welcoming solitude and quiet so that growth and development doesn't delude us. That's why you have to play Grace Jaying. I will. And now Jaying will look into Mutual Journey and unpack the wonderful cultural values that this game holds for us. Over to you, Jai. Mutazione is a 2019 adventure exploration game by Danish developer D. Guterfabrik. As a single-player narrative game, you play as Kai, a 15-year-old girl from the big city. Pictured here wearing white t-shirt, purple shorts, cool sneakers, and neon green socks. There's Mew, the cat lady, and Tong, just two other characters you'll meet on Mutazione. But more on that later. While the main protagonist is just 15 years old, there is so much going on in this game that it makes it suitable for adults well above 15, like you and I both. If you haven't already guessed, Mutazione is a portmanteau of the words mutant plus zone plus biome. Mutant is the resulting form of a mutation, very often a reference to a freak of nature, while zone is an area of land with specific characters, purpose, different use and limitations. Biome is a large natural area characterized by its vegetation, soil, climate, and wildlife. We quickly learn that Mutazione is an island full of mutants, plants, and strange life forms. Even without getting into too much detail about the gameplay, story, and characters of the game, the title already leaves us, the player, with some clues about the themes and the subject matters that the game will regard. The player begins the game with some questions at the back of our minds. Why mutant? What happened on this island that caused this mutation? And what are these unique biomes and life forms that we are going to encounter on Mutazione? What is going to happen to Nonna? We get a sense that the game is concerned with the ecology of flora and fauna and our relationship with the environment. We know that something had happened that altered the nature of the island, causing the inhabitants and the life forms to mutate as well. These are questions that frame the user's perspective as we begin the adventure game. This is a game that really encourages you to take your time and to observe and experience the world that it has created. Through interactive storytelling, Mutazione is a game that teaches us how to care. The game premise begins with Kai leaving her mother, Gaia, at the re request of Gaia, Kai is urgently asked to visit and care for Nonna, Kai's dying grandfather, who has lived on Mutazune Island for the past 20 years. Gaia has to stay behind because Kai has a younger brother that Gaia has to care for. We are immediately transported into the world of Mutazione through its beautiful 2D art styles, as you can see here. You can't hear it, but the soundtrack of the game is extremely therapeutic and very meditative as well. This premise of giving and receiving care offers us a glimpse to how care functions as a core element in Mutazione. The game revolves around acts of caring, caring about and paying attention to our environments, caring for and helping those around us. Care work is so important in our everyday lives, but very often it is forgotten, made invisible, overlooked by social policies and assumed to be an issue about how caring you are as a person as compared to how much care work should be supported by the societies we are part of. Mutazione expands our world of thinking about care work beyond neoliberal perspective as we continue to play the game. So how do you play Mutazione? The main game mechanics involves Kai running around exploring Mutazione by walking or running, talking to and befriending island residents. You also end up having to help with tasks and unfinished business around the island. 
These range from very simple tasks such as passing a message or visit to the library. Finally, you have to compose and tend to different types of gardens before you can move on to the next chapter of the game. The screen grab you see here is the extensive map of the island that you will explore in the game. The more you move through the story, the more you get to visit different parts of the map. In terms of game environment, there are different spaces that you enter where you visit different islanders who live and hang out in these different spots. In this way, environmental storytelling is very crucial to the way you learn about Mutazioni's traumatic history as well. Through different conversations, we learned that over a hundred years ago, a meteor moon dragon struck a tropical holiday resort, as you can see in the footage here from the game. Most of the inhabitants perished, while those who survived began to show very strange mutations. Because of Mutazione's unique situation and circumstance, a team of scientists were drawn to the island. But as outsiders, they were unable to understand the humanity of the inhabitants, and they were very unable to help as well. And instead of truly helping, the scientists wanted to harness the power of the island, where shamans could manipulate time and space. With the scientists' interference and the way that they settled into Mutazione, the island experienced a second form of catastrophe. More hurt was enacted onto the inhabitants of the island because of these scientists. With time, the scientists quickly retreated and those who remained in the mutating environment found a small little community that is quite isolated, known as Mutazione today. As we can see, themes of post-colonialism haunt the backdrop of Mutazione. Through simple dialogue choices, you learn how to carry conversations with those around you. With each conversation, the player learns a little bit more about each and every one of the characters living on the island. We understand their backstories, their circumstances, and their relationships with one another. In this way, the player begins to be more and more involved in the Mutazioni community. The choices vary though. Sometimes you could choose to share a little bit more about yourself. Other times you can decide to keep quiet or just listen. The game also reveals more about Kai's backstory as we speak with one another and speak with other characters as well. Here we learn that she had recently lost her father. But loss is not shunned or avoided in conversations as well. The game very often puts the players in positions where we learn that words are just one way of showing concern. Sometimes it's not knowing what to say and that is okay. As you can see here, Kai shares that knowing what to say was something that she was never good at. Empathy and learning what to do never comes easy. But by the end of the game, the player gets better at offering help and words of comfort, as shown in the different dialogue options made available. The game is really about slowing down and taking our time. Each day is divided into different periods of the day, rather than by the hour or the minute. A short diary entry appears with each interaction with every character. The more you talk to the island inhabitants, the more your diary fills up with interesting details about them. You also learn that Kai's grandfather is also Mutazione's local shaman, that he knows a lot about the gardens and wishes to share this knowledge with Kai. But Kai has an important role in this puzzle, something that the player learns at the end of the game, and I will not spoil it for you. As such, a lot of time is spent sitting in the gardens, composing different types of gardens. And here you can see Kai and Nonna at the rooftop garden, just enjoying the space and being with nature. As you explore the island, you also end up collecting unique seed types that will be useful when you're tasked to control and compose gardens of different themes. After a garden is composed, the player sits in the space and listens to the beautiful music that is created by the garden. Again, the game emphasizes that care work is difficult and should not be assumed or taken for granted. Here we see Kai getting quite worried that her grandfather had died for a moment. In this instance, she draws a similarity between caring for a young child and an elderly person. In fact, it is suggested that it is very often forgotten that caring for an elderly person is also a stressful job. Caring is work. Importantly, Mutazione provides a nuanced understanding of help and care. The game invites the audience to think about how help can be defined. We see in this screen grab that Kai is getting a little bit frustrated because Nonna does not seem to be offering her any options where she can help meaningfully by her own definition. 
At this point, Lorna has been telling her to tend to the garden, which kind of feels pointless to a 15-year-old. And you can see here Nonna explaining, surely help should be defined by the person to whom you wish to give. The game is also one that teaches you that there are times when the intention to care ends up crossing a boundary of the other, and helping someone else is a delicate act that demands that we respect each other's space, boundaries, as we offer acts of care as well. Spike is seen here getting really angry and upset because Mew had taken it upon herself to do something for Spike, thinking she knew better. Sometimes help can be overwhelming and imposing to another, even if you mean well, as we can see here. Nonna speaks of Maury's care. Sometimes the kindness can be overwhelming for somebody. And in this situation here, Eileen, the one in white, speaks to Tong, who had suggested that he would give her everything she ever wanted. And she responds, this isn't a movie. This counters the Hollywood trope and the Disney princess narrative of women needing to be saved and men needing to be heroes. Caring does not mean saving or fixing. Because of the trauma that most of Mutazione inhabitants face, a lot of the things that had happened to them cannot be reversed or changed. Here, Mew speaks of her children who were killed in the meteor. Mutazione offers, though, a very simple but forgotten aspect of care. Sometimes, and most of the time, caring means holding space for another person especially when it comes to grief of any kind, where nothing can be changed, reversed, or fixed. Caring for another person in these moments really means holding space for the other to feel their feelings. And even if these feelings are not positive, and sometimes caring for somebody else means that you have to be uncomfortable with your own feelings while holding space for another to feel theirs. Muta Zione also highlights the limits of care where it is important to know that we cannot help people to get better for them, but we can choose to be there with them. And also the point made here while Kai is speaking to her mother is one that you cannot be there for someone without first being there for yourself. While this may appear to rehash some neoliberal notions of self-care that cautions against codependence, Mutazione has established this community as more than being self-sufficient, but it's about healthy ways of supporting one another through different types of care work. Finally, sometimes caring means being there, simply being there with no words. Here Kai sits with Eileen by the lighthouse and she says, can you just imagine I'm saying something here which is like the right thing to say. With the backdrop of the meteor attacks and the scientists further hurting the people of Mutazioni, care is quickly situated within the social, the political, and the cultural landscape. Without thinking about the infrastructural support that needs to be put in place, care work can remain very limited. All in all, in Mutazioni, care work takes the form of slowing down, taking our time, paying attention to those around us. Care work does not mean fixing or saving another, but care work can be an act of holding space for others. Ecological care and collective care are gestures that foreground the sustainability of how our environments are and how we live in them. I will now move on to the playthrough of Rhyme, another game that addresses the way we deal with healing in the face of loss. Rhyme is an adventure puzzle video game developed by Kekila Works in 2017. The game follows a boy arriving at a mysterious island not knowing what had happened and only having a fox-like spirit as a guide. This game has been reimagined as an interactive experience at the Virtual Realms Video Games Transformed exhibition at the Art Science Museum as well. So let's not waste time and let's get started with the game. Okay, let's go. 
So when I'm pressing the mm. triangle, he's actually making a sound. So, I mean, I'm, I'm getting the sense that the fact that I can use my voice mm. is probably going to be quite important in this game. So, let me jump. So, let's see. Where shall we go? Plenty of crabs um, there. Yeah. Okay, I think maybe here. Um, let's try. Can I jump? Not yet. Oh, maybe here. So I mean, we have no idea what's going on now. Mm -hmm. Okay, here, here, here. <laughs> yes! Look at that. 10 upon 10 jumping. I hope I'm going the right way. Oh, to the no, right, to the no, right, to the yeah. right. Right? Yeah, yeah, turn, turn, turn. Go! Nailed it. The sun is setting. Oh, setting. Okay. And we are still stuck. Still oh. stuck. We're going to get there. This one. This tower. Uh huh. So we should cross this path, right? Come on. <gasps> no! I'm back at the beach. Oh. <laughs> so we go up here. It's a little bit dark. So we have to just kind of feel the space. Oh look, you just learned a new skill. Like with this vine, you realize that when you get to the vine, you mm -hmm. can just jump and move about. So like the game teaches you what you need to know a little bit at a time, right? So at first I learned how to jump and then now I know how to roll and I'm not lost. <gasps> I'm going towards the tower. So Perseverance. Yes, of course. And then so this like is exactly how I feel now. <laughs> Relieved to have found my way. Wow, the peach wow. is so big. Yeah. A tiny boy with. Oh my gosh, you're after me. Go. Save yourself. Wait. His first fruit yeah, of his labor. I know. Ugh. Take it, wild, wild boar. I think it's to give it to the boy. Ah! Okay. <laughs> okay, no, no. It's good, it's good. Mm. Oh, so the light source. So I guess the voice is important in activating these like spirit statues. Mm. Let's go to the next one. Uh. Yeah, 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 yes, 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 yes. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. I can do it. Come on. Mm. Oh my yeah, gosh. you did it. See, this is the triumphant moment where Jane was talking about winning. Winning Jim starts with the first goal. jump. Concentration. Oh my gosh, I'm so proud of myself. Okay, wait, 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 wait. As we can already feel this sense of like identification with this boy. Uh, we're subtly desperate yeah, we're just, like, to find. Yeah, completely lost. Um, observing this huge space with no clue to how to get to or the any tower. clue as to what's happening to him. <gasps> and I'm so small, I'm trapped. And so this is really spatial storytelling in its best form. Really, I think the sense of like confusion is definitely felt in really navigating this um, huge space with the music, ah, and the treacherous land that I would definitely fall in. And this is just um, really immersive in bringing me in the world of rhyme. Simply from that short playthrough, we get an inkling as to how Ryan might produce an aesthetically rewarding story by achieving narrative immersion in the game. Unlike Mutazione, Ryan has no dialogue and we have to make sense of the world through symbols and environmental puzzles. Even without dialogue, as we have learned today, a game can immerse its players through different techniques, such as one, identification, where you gain control over the main character very quickly from the start with not much backstory explained. Second, the use of foreshadowing through the caped figure that becomes an important element that completes the game's story in the end. Third, at the same time, spatial form of storytelling features in rhyme because in exploring the world that's created, 
I also learned a little bit more about what had happened to the boy. Of course, again, I don't want to spoil more than I should. Fourth, because we are given so little information, the game draws us in with the desire to know what will happen next as a way to find out what had happened before, as a mode of temporal storytelling. The desire to know what really happens keeps the players hooked and interested. And finally, the use of emotional form of storytelling and engagement is evident in the game. By playing as the boy, we feel lost, we experience anger, fear, sadness and resignation through the passage of the game as we stumble and climb, jump and shout and figure out our way around this horrible and scary place. The juxtaposition of a young child navigating through very treacherous architectural structures and moving through deep underwater worlds is sure to put the player in a position to feel that deep sense of helplessness and solitude that permeate the game experience. What is powerful about the game medium then, it's its ability to have you feel and experience things that you would otherwise not have the opportunity to. This in itself is a mode of enacting empathy, to feel with and share the feelings of in this manner, games offer us so much potential to learn lessons and to understand different complex emotions and lived experiences. Perhaps as a way to open up new ways of being empathetic and to expand our repertoire of collective social cultural knowledge and understanding. As we have discussed, video games demonstrate so much potential to bring about positive social and cultural changes in both individual and collective ways. Hopefully, we can begin to think about games as a powerful medium for cultural expression on top of how entertaining and enjoyable they can be. Thank you for joining us for the online talks with DigiPen Singapore. To find out more on some of the past DigiPen Singapore programs with Art Science Museum, click on the link at the description below. Viva, Viva la video, video games! games.